Right, 24 May 2021, and today I'm joined by my usual guest on Mondays, Mr. Tinashe Jonasi. How are you, sir? Ah, uh, so blessed, you know, when I'm on Gambabwe Media because uh, it's a it's a it's a platform for free expression. Okay, and I like the glasses. You're looking glamorous over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I won't mention my, my, my healthy challenge tonight. <laughs> okay. Right. So today we want to talk about ED and his election promises. Last week, ZANU PF came out and they said they have delivered on their election promises. And I want to just beam Nick Mangwana here. He says that ED says what he means and means what he says. With more than two years to go on his term, ED has shown that his pledges were not vain politicking, but were sincere and solemn undertakings. Work in progress says it all. Let me remove this uh, banner here. Says it all and all this in context of COVID-19. COVID-19. Unozo day. Right. That is Nick Mangwana there. And um, I think we can go again to the spokesperson of ZANU-PF, uh, SK Moyo, and let's hear what he says, and then we'll go into the discussion. We take pride in the journey we have traveled so far under the wise stewardship of His Excellency, the President, Comrade Idim Nangagwa. We agreed with the people through the manifesto that we we're going to repair, rehabilitate, retire, and dualize roads, and roads are being done. We said we will develop a new public transport system, and indeed we revived the Zupco, and the results are there for all to see. We said we are going to deal with corruption ruthlessly, and the fight goes on. We said we are going to reform towards civil political engagements and shun hostility in preference to dialogue, and it is going on under Pollard. We said we are going to create jobs, and indeed true to that, several jobs have been created in revived industries and manufacturing sector. Even in the informal sector, a lot of jobs there are, must be recognized. They are being created. We promise to reform the media, and here you are, all of you, you are here. We promise to re-engage countries that we cross paths with, and that is a continuous process. We promise to prioritize the health, care of our citizens, and indeed, notwithstanding the added health disaster of COVID-19, we have managed to do the best in the region to serve the lives of our people. We are leading in terms of administering vaccinations in the region, and thus a feat we are proud of. We committed to achieve food security, and everyone now is so familiar with Fumvudza in Toasa. These have achieved miracles. We indeed promised to stabilize the economy and our currency, and that has been to a large extent achieved. That indeed attests to the seriousness with which our government, under the leadership of President Idim Nangagwa, has been. Right. That was a long, long video with a lot of 
promises being talked about there. And obviously, there was a lot of debate around this last week. But what I saw and what I, I, I found very interesting was this headline in the Daily News, ZANU-PF texting to 2023 victory. Let's start there. Has Idim Nangagwa done enough so that he can win the 2023 elections without any challenge? Um, I think I would answer yes and no. Uh, yes, on behalf of progressive Zimbabweans, who put uh, Zimbabwe first before their political parties, before their individual interests. And then I will put, uh, okay, this yes is, um, ED is the second president of our country. And uh, the performance to me, uh, the first major yes of ED is on the health sector. Uh, basing on the pand COVID-19 pandemic. Countries like US, the so-called uh, biggest economy, advanced health care, they, they were shaken and they, were, and, they, and they fell to COVID-19. Countries like India, which is an economic superpower, they, they've got their own uh, vaccine, they were tested and they fell to COVID-19. UK, was Italy, we can talk so many first world countries that, that their disaster management proved to be in a messy. And then a small economy and a country like Zimbabwe, I think the, the, the death toll of Zimbabwe, it's a record among the best performing countries in the world when the, 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 the many countries thought Zimbabwe would be tiered and it would be a, probably even a, a, geno, a healthy genocide. On, on COVID-19, a, a president's duty to me, number one, is to protect the citizens, of which in this case our attack, serious attack was biological attack, the COVID-19, and he, he managed to save lives. The first phase, the so-called second phase, we are waiting, awaiting the third wave. To me, it, it gets all the stars on the COVID-19. And then on the economy sector, uh, with COVID-19 uh, running amok across the globally, Zimbabwe's economy was supposed to shrink beyond any percentage of shrinkage. And uh, we see is the running around the country, and I, I wonder even where he's getting the energy. I mean, someone who is almost eight years old, uh, but he's running around the country across the country, and uh, commissioning, uh, opening, groundbreaking dams. And uh, to me, I think when someone is you are when you love Zimbabwe more than uh, politics, when you put Zimbabwe first. To me, ED deserves to actually with the our economy being challenged. To me, I, I guess the progressive people of Zimbabwe would not even expect elections. The, the money for elections was supposed to be donated to the president's fund so that it's channeled to the projects that ED is running around. And 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 then he help our country than to to destabilize what he's doing. Okay. So let's go back to that point where you are now. Is he going to win the election without a challenge? The way things are right now. Are people happy? I, I, that's why I say progressive Zimbabweans, even elections, they, they, I don't see the reason why there must be elections. To me, if I was the... Uh, if I had the powers to, 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 to say the elections must go on or not, I was going to vote for elections not to be, to be, to be done. And then the money for elections, which, must, which can run into millions, must do, donate, be donated to the presidential uh, fund so that ED can continue to, 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 to push his projects. Because at the end of the day, we want a better Zimbabwe.
and uh, why spending millions in hosting elections elections we know that we we we, we know that they, 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 there's no currently there's no opposition in zimbabwe because of it's two folds opposition leaders are clowns opposition supporters are clowns so we have got a if you sub you you add opposition leaders who are clowns plus opposition supporters who are clowns the answer is called opposition circus so to, okay. to me it, it is just a waste of, of resources to host elections tinashe jonas is not going to win whether i contest or not i'm not going to win uh, come with the due respect comrade monzora is not going to i don't see him winning anything because the the, the mdct is divided into mdc monzora mdc kupe even komichi and and muzuri muzuri and komichi are just loyal to 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 comrade monzora because they know that the the congress proved they don't have a political capital but we know that comrade comrade muzuri is ambitious Comrade Komich is ambitious, although on political capital it's zero. Madam Kupe is ambitious. On political capital, she's zero. I mean, so everyone wants to be a president in, in, in opposition. Which we, 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 that is the, 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 the clowning part of it. On the other side, we've got Nelson Chamisa, whom we know that he, after 2023 results are, are announced. The answer of Chamisa is I'm rigged. If there was some way Chamisa is going to write right now, already that answer is there. Um, I'm rigged. And 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 you see, Father Maire always Zimbabwe deserves new leadership. New leadership. New leadership doesn't mean a better country. How is Father Maire and Chamisa running MDC? How are they running? What is the track record in Kwazana of, of Chamisa as a member of parliament? So, MDC, sorry, opposition, we want the power, nothing else. I think a, a leader who is power hungry is dangerous to not only to the country but to, to himself. So, I, I don't think there's need for even a, a, a holding of elections. But there's no opposition. Anyone who thinks he's an opposition leader is thinking so. Because he's a clown. Okay. Let's put the promises aside for a second. And let's yes. go to the culture. Yes. The previous government of um, President Robert Mugabe compare it to the current government of President Idim Nangawa. What do you think about the culture? Has he brought in a new culture of connecting with the citizens? Yeah. Uh, remember, the the opposition citizens are hostile to him. Uh, we cartoon him, we insult him at every opportunity. Uh, but he is he, actually, I can say, he has successfully stopped the politics, and he is focusing on the economy. And the opposition, we are not helping him. We are not praising him for fear that the voters would vote for him again. Uh, in the instead of playing political strategy, opposition we want to sabotage him. Uh, yet when someone is uh, do, trying his best, the country if ED is op is building a build a bridge, or ED is is, is I mean building a road a network in Zimbabwe, that that infrastructure is not going to be taken to with ED to his family. If even one day he is going to die, like all of us, he is not going to die with that infrastructure. That infrastructure is going to be there for our kids, for our, for our grandchildren. So, so I, I mean, in a hostile, in a country with the hostile opposition and the hostile uh, civic society, he is the, he is end my respect because the ED is not playing politics. ED is playing the economy right now. Okay, I, I want to play a quick clip and then I want us to go to, to the next question. Okay. 
right? What do you think about this video? Would Ara Jim Gabe would he have been able to do something like that? Ah uh, no, with Mugabe you couldn't. Mugabe was too serious. Uh, Ed is look at the age gap. If I'm not mistaken, Twabam is plus or minus 34 years old on average, and uh, President Ed is almost plus or minus 80 years old. In other words, Twabam is a grandson of the president in terms of age, but. Twabamu is late to do what he's doing, to shoot live of the president. And Zimbabweans, the, those who are brainwashed by Chamisa, they don't see that ED is available for everyone. They are told to say ED is a thief, ED is this and that. I mean, ED is available to be used to be a privilege of every Zimbabwean. Those who want land, those who want youth programs, those who want empowerment. But uh, for some reasons, us as opposition, we believe that anyone who is around ED, there must be um, some, some wrong partnerships. Uh, yet I, I think ED is available for everyone, even as opposition. But if we don't uh, take the opportunity to engage with him uh, and 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 was he is the president of everyone if there's a father in the house and he, he, you are chased away from school because of your shortage of school fees and your father has got money to to give you and then you don't tell him for some reasons he don't like your father then you are going to be miserable the rest of your life so i i think ed is a servant who twabam people like twabam they, they, they take advantage that the president is available and uh, that's it. Like any other citizen, you, the, the, the president is your father, and you can play with your father. There's nothing wrong to play with, your, with the president because he's a father to everyone. So I, I think okay. it's commendable. Yeah. Right. So personally, I think what has happened in terms of access to the president is amazing. I'm sure no one can take that from him. But let's now go to the facts. So there is an institution here called the Civil Institute. This was referenced by Nick Mangwana in his tweet. And I took the opportunity to go in and have a look. So I've displayed the results. Idim Nangabwa has been in office for 1,002 days, 9 hours, 58 minutes, and 0 seconds. And he made a total of 238 promises, of which 183 promises are in progress. 43 have not commenced. Zero have been modified. Six have been broken. And six have been implemented. What do you think of this track record? If it was all level results, this play, it, it, it ranges around the NA. Uh, it's above uh, average uh, performance, and uh, uh, I'm proud to call him my president. Okay, so let's go a bit deeper. SK Moyo spoke a lot about infrastructure. Do you think ED has done a good job on infrastructure? He has done a good job uh, considering that he, he inherited an infrastructure which was uh, in bad shape. Uh, in other countries, if we talk about 2017 when ED took over power, in most countries, infrastructure is already around 90% in, in good shape. Actually, ED was supposed to be focusing on other things, not, you know, not roads and, and um, dams. Because the, since 1980, when the President Mugabe was in power, he was, he, should, he was supposed to have done, to have built dams and road networking. If he was going to build any infrastructure, probably it was going to be more like underground railway, state, railway, railway lines, luxury, luxurious infrastructure. But he, he is faced with the building infrastructure from, from scratch. So I, I think he has done tremendously well because he inherited the ruins in terms of structure. 
Okay, so I, I would like to encourage everybody to go to zimcitizenwatch.org. This is the website where you can find details about the promises in detail. What has been happening, what was promised. This is an amazing uh, document here, and I encourage everyone to go and watch it and see what is here. Now, let's look at the broken promises. I, I know we've spoken a lot about the promises that were fulfilled. Let's look at the broken promises, what these guys say here. Uphold and apply fully the rule of law while ensuring equality before the law. Why are they saying he broke the promises? Uh, I think that is the... Remember, most things are analyzed politically. Uh, I don't think there was any rule of law which was broken. Why? Because the, both the activists and the opposition political leaders, we are abusing the law. Uh, I, for one, I must admit before, before your audience, I have abused uh, the patience and the and kindness of ED. We, I mean... ED, I think I don't I don't know any president who is insulted in the world more than ED. So people must not think uh, if you abuse the law and then you are arrested as as an opposition, then the quality pro political persecution. When people like Comrade uh, Obama they are arrested uh, just recently, uh, Comrade. Uh, 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 I'm forgetting this the former Minister of Health Comrade Parenyatwa just recently I think he was in court Comrade uh, Omdede is in court when a ZANU-PF member even top official is arrested people they don't call it a political persecution but selectively when an opposition member is arrested we talk of human rights. We talk of persecution. I, I think when you talk about when you talk about the rule of law, it, to me it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's a weaponized. Human rights are weaponized because the, when he, when he, when a judgment is given that he, comrade Malaba, the president extended the term of the chief justice, and. The High Court Judge, Justice Joe, declared uh, that extension illegal. And people are celebrating. And now, but if, if, if it was a defeat to the opposition, it was going to, people are going to talk about the rule of law. Uh, judiciary which is captured I, I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm now aware that uh, the word capture, state capture the word human rights the word rule of law are used selectively and the, the other word called political persecution when referring to opposition members when referring to ZANU-PF or the government being defeated at law it's called uh, the, the, the judge is so brave. The judge is so brave. But that judge is working under the Judiciary Service Commission of Zimbabwe. Uh, and, and, and the commander of every department in Zimbabwe is the president. So I think we have weaponized some terminology and some uh, terms like democracy and everything. Okay. Let's go to my last and favorite a promise that is listed here the availability of cash through the banking system this has been with us for over 10 years if i'm not mistaken from the times of gideon gono why is this not being solved all right i, I wanted you to appreciate one thing mr gambakwe that the economy to fix the economy it's not an event. It's a process. Uh, there, there are so many components which are connected to, to, to our economy 
the trade deficit, trade balances, uh, I mean, inflation, uh, I mean, uh, our exports, our imports, uh, our culture of paying taxes, duty on the border, corruption at the airports, at the border. Uh, in Zimbabwe, currently, this administration uh, inherited an economy which was more than 70% informal. How does the government, the, 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 the mainstream income of, 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 of any government is taxes? And when, when an economy is highly in, informalized, more than 70% of the economy is, 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 is informal sector, how do you collect taxes? It's difficult. Now, so th 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 this government is faced with a lot of challenges because our economy is informalized. If, if the economy is informalized, it means it's, 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 it's difficult to regulate and to control. Now, so th there are so many things that are in play, sanctions, everything, corruption. There's no denial that there's corruption in Zimbabwe. But it, it, the, the, the fight against corruption is not only about the president's office. It's not about the government. It's about every Zimbabwean. Because the corruption is not only done in, 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 in government offices. Corruption is done in the streets. We, 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 we have seen now uh, how someone smuggled uh, gold to South, South Africa. And we have seen how the government arrested someone who was who helped, assisted a, a, a member of the CIO, in, in, an intelligence officer. I mean, no one can then say the president's office sent the, the CIO to help that, that, that guy. Because if it was the, the, the president involved, why can't he even talk to, to his counterpart in South Africa? And uh, so the, the problem is, our problems in Zimbabwe is that we, 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 politi we, 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 we politicize them. Instead of saying corruption is a crime, whoever, and how do we fight corruption actually? Corruption is not fought by police or anyone. Corruption is fought by people who have got evidence. Who, who takes the evidence to Zach or to police station and report. The best way to fight corruption is to report it to police station. So, but everything in Zimbabwe is political. Corruption to me is not political. Corruption is a crime. It's the same as raping, as robbery. It's, it's, it's classified our, under our constitution as a form of a crime. It's, it's, it's not a political practice, ideology, or whatsoever. Mr. Tinashe Jonasi, I really enjoy talking to you today. And this topic is very, very important. As we go towards the 2023 elections, this is going to play a very big part. The way that uh, President Idim Nangagwa has managed to do so well in terms of that report by Sivio, I think he's done well, 183 promises in progress at half point. I think that is very good. If you look at people like Donald Trump, they say they're going to put a wall uh, <laughs> at the border with Mexico, right? And by the time he left, that wall was not there. Yeah. And I, I'm encouraging everyone to go to Sivio and have a look. Very interesting report that is there. And I'm, I'm not sure who owns that institute and, and where it comes from, but it's very, very detailed. Now, I've got a question for you before we close on the screen. That says, Jonas, why don't you just join ZANU-PF? Because you're always defending ZANU-PF. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Jonas? All right. First, I respect advice from Zimbabweans because the... I don't monopolize the thinking, thinking or thought processes. Uh, everyone was born with a brain. So uh, I think 
I will consider a yes and a no. I'm saying I should join Zanu PF because I'm defending them. I'm not defending Zanu PF. Uh, Zanu PF, unfortunately or fortunately, because I'm an opposition person, the unfortunate part is that Zanu PF is my government. So, so now, demonizing Zanu PF every day, every hour, is the same as demonizing my country. Because Zanu PF, every Zimbabwean swap is in Zanu PF. Myself, I, I know that I wanted to be a president of the country one day, but the reality is that I'm not. I'm not in the office right now. There is ED. I, I I don't have the power to to direct government resources to build even a bridge in my village. I don't have that power. So ED must be encouraged right now because he has the mandate to to manage to account. To, to utilize the, the national budget towards the developmental projects. So, so why, why would I compare myself to ED? ED doesn't... I, I, that, that's why I'm, I'm talking a lot. Because I don't have the power to do. ED is not talking like me. Why? Because he has got the power to do. So, right now in Zimbabwe... There's Tinashe Jonas, there's Chamisa, there's Comrade Monzora, there's everyone. We are not changing lives of any Zimbabwe. Our duty, we are promising our voters that if vote for us, we are going to do this. ED is not promising anyone. ED is doing. So if any Zimbabwean who is normal, who loves his country, is not supporting a, a, a leader who is doing and support leaders who are promising. <laughs> that person, if I die tomorrow, is my son going to inherit my, my, my speech, my analysis? You know, is my, my son going to drive a car in, in, in my analysis? No. So ED has got the, the five-year mandate now, and he deserves the support from Tinashe Jonasi. The person who is asking me must also support ED. Nelson Chamisa must support ED. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad Comrade Monzora is supporting ED and uh, Comrade Maduku and, and the rest. Otherwise, the not, 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 not li liking or supporting ED is the tantamount to, to, deni to denial. It's like a doctor is, is diagnosing you and telling you you are HIV positive and you are saying he's, he's lying. If you don't follow the diet or anything that the doctor is going to tell you, you are going to fall, fall sick to develop into AIDS and die. Mm. So I will support ED. I will support ZANU-PF if they are in power because the, the government of Zimbabwe is called ZANU-PF. So I, I think I, 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 it, 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 I, I don't need to join ZANU-PF or, or what, but ZANU-PF is the, is the government of Zimbabwe. So must I support the government of Mozambique? Because if I if I deny ZANU PF as a government, that means I should support a, a government of Mozambique, of Malawi. I, I'm I'm not sick. If I was sick before, I'm no longer sick. I'm treated now. It's Chamisa and the company who are still in in Ngoma Uru. Right, Mr. Tinashe Jonasi, I really enjoyed talking to you, but I think you dodged my question. Uh, I, I'll ask you again. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. of, of, of joining ZANU-PF. Yes, you, that okay. guy wants an answer. He wants, you know, why? Oh, oh, if you oh, align, oh, you, okay, you, you align oh. with what ZANU-PF is doing, uh -huh. then why, why, why don't you join ZANU-PF like okay. other people have done? The, the, I think the president of Mtuarazi has joined. In fact, this weekend we we're all shocked when Barbara Nyagomo joined ZANU-PF. Uh, I, I'm sure you've seen people like Obed Gutu. They've joined uh, even some very senior people in Chamisa's party. They've joined the, uh, the ZANU PF. Why okay. don't you, as a young person, yeah. join ZANU PF and help to transform the party? Ah, thank you so much. I want to know who is not ZANU PF in Zimbabwe? If, if, if there's someone who is not ZANU PF, because ZANU PF is controlling the system.
every system in Zimbabwe. I, I, I think people, they, they mistake one thing here. It's like you visit someone's house and then you believe you are not part of that family. Uh, because you are, maybe you are there for two days or so. That whole two days you are, you are, you are, you are part of that family. The, the, the country called Zimbabwe, the family called Zimbabwe, the fathers, the aunts, the uncles in that family is the ED and his cabinet and his government. So I, I don't know who is not part of the family of ZANU-PF in Zimbabwe. I, I don't know. So to me, whether I join ZANU-PF officially or not, but I'm still being controlled by government, by ZANU-PF systems. Okay. Right. I think let's bring this to an end. Obviously, 2023 is very, very close. Yeah. And so far, according to what we've seen here, it's looking like it's pointing towards a ZANU-PF victory because the opposition is not very much in order. And worse with this kind of performance, in terms of the report that we saw from CVO and the public sentiment, I think this is going to be very difficult for the opposition. Is there something else you want to say before we close? I know. I, I think uh, if we say opposition, we are being too kind. I, I don't think there's opposition currently. As I said, our opposition leaders are clowns. Opposition supporters are clowns. And you add the two, you get a, a circus, a opposition circus. I, I mean, sometimes we should not massage our egos, you know, our e political egos. No one can challenge ED like, in, in the current state. There, there's no one who can challenge ED. And uh, I'm, I'm very tempted to just uh, endorse ED. I'm very tempted to endorse ED on presiden presidential elections. Maybe if, I, if my party is going to contest, probably I'm, I'm, I might contest some words and some member of parliament, but the presidential ED is likely to humiliate and embarrass me. I don't trust him. So, 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 so I, I think we should reach a point sometimes that we, we put our country first. The opposition is, is the clowns as we speak. Right, Mr. Tinashe Jonasi, I really enjoyed talking to you today and to everyone else who is here. Please go to civioinstitute.org. So civioinstitute.org has got a very detailed report on how President Idi Mnangagwa has done during the, the period that he's been in office for just over 1,000 days. And this is how you spell Civio Institute. So yeah. that is the website. Sorry, Mr. Jonas, yeah. you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I, I've got a part that I'm not happy with the, the performance of ED, uh, my personal part. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether ED is advised by the Central Intelligence Organization or why or military intelligence. I'm not sure. But my 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 problem is on the uh, tele or, or, or on, on the cell phone connectivity. Uh, I, I, my, my own belief is that Econet has got the capacity to put even 5G in Zimbabwe and uh, to make sure that our cell phone, whether it's the government or whether it's Net One or it's Telecel, I don't care. But uh, in terms of cell phone active, uh, connectivity and in terms of data costs, uh, they, I think my president must do better. I don't know whether if, tell, if Econet is allowed to bring state-of-the-art equipment, whether it's linked to regime change or what, I don't know. Because the, I'm not privy to intelligence sources. Uh, but I, I think, to me, I think like the government is somewhat working against the uh, technology. I, to me, I think it's a deliberate. And I don't know whether it's about state security or what. But uh, right now, economy is now more digital. We, we need a, a cheaper, cheap data in Zimbabwe. And we need... Zimbabwe, we are educated. We, 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 we need a, 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 a competitive cell phone a connectivity in our country. 
it's it, it's actually a problem. So I don't know. Maybe the president is uh, well ad is advised well with the intelligence community that may be uh, equipment of cell or of, of of telecoms can maybe be used uh, to spy on the country. I don't know. I'm just talking as an ordinary citizen. Okay, I tend to agree with you. Uh, tele uh, cell phone connectivity is very very bad. I bought I think twenty gigs of data. Uh, when I got to Masuingo, I could not even upload a picture on Twitter uh, on one of the of those networks you just mentioned. It was so slow, and I ended up coming back with my 20 gigs still in the in the car. It ended up expiring before I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, I feel sorry for, for people in Zimbabwe who have to endure such slow speeds of data. But I think let's talk about that another day. We've talked for very, very long, and I would like us to end this discussion here, Mr. Jonasi, and I'll see you again next week on Monday, same time. Thank you so much for the platform. <laughs> Mamu on